Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is a good morning. It is a beautiful morning. Uh, I hope you've got everything that you needed to get done in September almost done. Because, boy, oh, boy, it, it's sort of looking like the fall out there. And it actually looks like the fall in here as well. So thank you to the folks who decorated up the church for this Sunday. It looks lovely. There are some announcements for us to look at, and I invite you to, to look those over. Um, this is a busy day. It is a special day for us. I was talking to Mel just before uh, coming up here, and he said, this is kind of the grand reopening, isn't it? And I said, well, yeah, that's one way of thinking about it. I think we had the grand reopening for all of that. A couple of weeks uh, passed, and now we have the grand reopening for Sealy's Bay United Church. So that is... A good thing, as we say. We also celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism this morning. We have our guest, who is not really a guest, but is our minister emeritus with us as well to bring a message. And we have a special soloist as well. So this is quite the day. And we welcome everyone who is here to help make this a special day. A couple of other notes, just make note there that. Uh, the Willing Workers at Alden are having a bake sale at the church on Saturday, October the 9th from 9 a.m. until sold out. So if you know how bake sales roll around here, that means 9.15. So get there, <laughs> get there early and, uh, and you will be rewarded. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for bulletins at the back of the church now. Uh, so do, uh, if you want to uh, dedicate a bulletin, make a note up there. There's also an offertory plate at the back, so we're still trying to work out some of these things. So if you have offering, if you could just leave it at, on the plate um, on the way out, that would be wonderful. We have communion coming up next week, and we had a brainstorm from, from Gary Bracken that we can do this by having grapes and crackers. So the, the, the liquid form was always the challenge when we were doing uh, thinking about how do you have communion, how do you share the cup, but we figured grapes, so we will have next week and following week, which will also be communion at Thanksgiving, we will be having uh, packaged, individually little packaged uh, grapes and crackers, and that will be how we will share the cup and, and the loaf uh, as we have communion together. Upcoming worship schedule. So we have met and we have worked out that from now until we meet again at an annual meeting in winter, we will be doing two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. So I'll be working with Jane and we will be getting out a sheet that will have all of this information on it going forward. But just as far as for purposes up until the end of October, know that we're here again in Sealy's Bay next week on the 3rd and then the 10th and the 17th at all of that, and then the 24th and the 31st back here at Sealy's Bay. The ecumenical service is planned for Thursday, September the 30th, and make a note of that at Gananoque Town Park as we mark the National Day of Truth, or for Truth and Reconciliation, Orange Shirt Day. Oh, there's probably other announcements. What am I missing? Oh, and welcome to everyone who may be watching this at a later date. Uh, it is the present for you, but it is the past for us, because we are recording the service, or other than broadcasting it live. But if you are taking time to be with us in worship, we welcome you as well. And thanks once again to Dave, who continues to be the master control at the back. And he's sitting on a chair worthy of the king of uh, technical things. He's got his throne back there. So thank you, Dave. Very comfortable. <laughs> I have one too. We take a moment in the midst of all of this busyness, in the midst of all of the things that we are called to, to do as the church, to come and to simply be the church together. So we take a moment to gather our hearts and our minds as we share these words of call. Come to this sacred place. And we create together with the Spirit. 
Come to this holy place. That is often generations before us, and welcome generations after us. Come to this sanctuary. It is a safe space for all, filled with the people who care for one another. Come to this moment in time, as we mark 144 years in this place. With praise, with love, and hope.
continue in prayer. O oh God, as we approach you in worship this morning, we trust that you will gather us together as one body. We trust that you will claim us again as your beloveds. We trust that you will forgive us again for all we do that is outside of the holy image we were created in. We pray, love us fully, thoroughly, flaws and all. When we have been saturated with your spirit, then send us out, send us with energy, use us as witnesses, work in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray and serve. Amen. The sacrament of baptism proclaims and celebrates the grace of God. By water and the Spirit, we are called, claimed, and commissioned. We are called God's own, welcome as children of God. We are claimed by Christ, united with Christ, united with one another and the Christian community of every time and place. And we are commissioned to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice and strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the work of the Church in the world. And at this time, I would invite Ashley to join me at the fall, please. Ordinarily, the clerk of session would be here to welcome you to um, this time, but because we're trying to keep, you know, separate and keep everyone apart, but the clerk of session is right there, Kristen Rock. So she welcomes you, I welcome you, the church welcomes you to this time. So I ask you these questions of faith and promise. Do you believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and who works in us and others by the Spirit? I do, by the grace of God. Trusting the gracious mercy of God, will you turn from the forces of evil and renounce their power? Will you proclaim Jesus crucified and risen in your words and actions? I will. God be my helper. And will you join with your brothers and sisters in this community of faith to celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, and love and serve others? And I would ask the congregation to rise in body or spirit. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer God's gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to Ashley as she lives and grows in Christ. And if so, please answer, we do by the grace of God. We do by the grace of God. Please be seated. And we pray. Gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life and within it, the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit covered at creation. By water comes the growth of the earth. Through water, you led the children of Israel to freedom. In the waters of the Jordan, 
Your child Jesus was baptized. Now, may your spirit be upon us and what we do, that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray.
through our online services, but here we have the opportunity to, to have her play for us in person. And Jill has asked me to mention that uh, the piece that she's performing, A Clair Benediction by John Rutter, we've reproduced the, the music of the words uh, to the music on the back of the bulletin. So if you just want to follow along and get a sense of, of what Rutter's uh, mood and uh, interpretation is as she plays.
Thank you, Jill. That was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I was going to say, John, I'm glad you have to preach that. <laughs> Not me. But thank you so much. That's, oh, the richness of the tone is beautiful. Thank you so much. Today's scripture reading comes from Mark 9, 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will soon be able to afterwards speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Thank you, Barb. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you someone who probably doesn't need much of an introduction to, to many of us, but uh, for those of you who may not know, John Barker served this pastoral charge in, what was it again, 72 to 75. 72 to 75. And uh, he has come back into the area and uh, is, is with Mary, his wife, and they have a coffee company together and many other things, including a real dad hand at, uh, at um, gardening, so the flowers in the church are courtesy of Mary and Jane, but it is really good to, to be able to, to, to say welcome back to the pulpit to, to John Barker. John, thank you so much for, for being our guest, who's not really a guest, but a guest as uh, our speaker for this Sunday. So let us welcome John. sentimental song. And hearing Jill play it made me teary. And seeing Ashley baptized with her strong and up voice, wow. I should just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley was part of the Bible study group that Mary was in and it was online. I also know last Sunday when we were on all of it and meeting inside for the first time after the prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer, Dawn was a bit <laughs> emotional because the congregation had joined him. And then I really knew that I and we in this pastoral charge, all of this ministry through COVID for us, we owe a huge thank you to Don and to Gary and to Danny and to Dave for what they've done for us. one way and another to put in the time. 
One of the things I have done is read, and one of the things I've been reading is 17th century English history. How many have done that? <laughs> See, I can say whatever I like. <laughs> century the 1600s in England was the time of the Stuart Kings and the Republic and the Civil Wars and Oliver Cromwell and I didn't understand it so I decided well here's my time to read and read and read it was a time of incredible religious intolerance The Stuart kings all believed that God had chosen them divinely. And if God had, God really got it wrong. <laughs> the official church and the Roman Catholic Church and six or seven or eight different kinds of Protestants each knew they had it right and each knew everyone else was wrong. Explains the tragic wars in lots of ways. Oliver Cromwell was a really gifted general and a really wily politician. And he was the Lord Protector for the Republic, which England was for a short time. And he was exceedingly religious himself. Pious, pious, Calvinist. They were all Calvinists and they didn't disagree on much, but they knew everybody else was wrong. So I read that stuff, and I read that stuff, and I thought, wow, how do I understand this? During the reign of the Lord Protector, Oliver Cromwell, England was quite powerful. They ruled without anyone challenging Cromwell, England and Scotland and Wales and Ireland and their influence in foreign affairs was significant. You didn't argue with Oliver. He wanted everyone to be religious and pious as he was, sincerely was. And he gave God credit for all the wars and battles he won and for all his political achievements. He certainly had gifts. But it made me wonder. One of the areas that the royalists held until Oliver Cromwell kicked them off was Oxfordshire and the University of Oxford. And after Cromwell died in 1658, the generals who had worked with him and for him, they brought the king back, even though Charles II was a real dud compared to Cromwell. They were so exhausted by the religious intolerance that they all were part of. And in 1662, which was four years after Cromwell, Scientists at the university, at Oxford University, formed the Royal Society. And they formed the Royal Society to decide things on imperial evidence without being influenced by the dogmatism or the political ideas of those who ran the university. And these scientists would have been mostly appointed by Cromwell. We can draw a straight line from that decision.
decision by the Royal Society at, the University, at Oxford University in 1662 to Bonnie Henry being given the Order of Canada for her work on COVID-19. That was a huge decision they made and its influence is staggering. I started to wonder in reading all of this I'm an English Calvinist. What else could I do? And most of you are too, whether you know it or not. <laughs> what of them is in me? I cherish my religious heritage, my Calvinist heritage, but what do I need to let go? What of them is in me? When I think of this stuff, I know what's bred in the bone doesn't disappear overnight. One has to work at it and work at it and work at it. I, of course, I was born into the truth. What an absurd idea, eh? no different from the divine writing those Stuart Kings. And I learned, even as an older child, that probably was wrong to think that all those other people and other churches and religions couldn't go to heaven because they had the wrong religion. That doesn't work. Glad to get over that. But I think of the residential schools. And we thought we were gifting those children, some of them were dying, with our ways of making things better for them. And we didn't see it, because the intolerance, I didn't see it until relatively recently, because the intolerance is so much a part of who we are. Bonnie Henry, professor of medicine at UBC, and the head honcho doctor in British Columbia, wrote a book, Be Kind, Be Calm, Be Safe. And she ended lots of her updates on what COVID was doing in British Columbia with those words, be kind, be calm, be safe. Good advice for me, trying to expand and deepen and broaden my believing and letting go of the stuff that needs to go. What's spread of the bone doesn't leave us easily, or at least me. So I come to that reading Bob read so well from Mark's Gospel. I read all four readings for this Sunday way back when, and I could interpret, I could, I didn't, but I could interpret every one of them as we're right and the other guys, whoever the other guys are, are wrong. But when I get into this one, she read that wonderful stuff. John, the disciple, says to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Apparently, religious intolerance doesn't begin with the Calvinists, the world. And Jesus says, no, who's not against us is for us, and people doing this in our name, my name, good for them. But then he ends that teaching. Jesus, every once in a while, says, very, very, I say unto you, which it would say in King James, or in this case, 
For truly I tell you, I don't know what the original Aramaic is. Do you know God? Anyhow, if he wanted people to really hear what he's saying, that's what's prefaced. And Jesus says, Truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. Think of that. He's talking about the other that John's complaining about. Who is the active one and ministering to us? Whoever gives you a cup of water to quench the thirst of your body. Whoever gives you a cup of understanding to quench the thirst of your mind. Whoever gives you a cup of compassion to quench the thirst of your heart. And whoever gives you a cup of faith to quench the thirst of your soul is doing a ministry that Christ names here to serve the servants of Christ. They're the active ones. All we have to do is receive that ministry in this, in this saying of Jesus. So, Dr. Bonnie Henry's advice is good. Be kind, be calm, be safe. This will work our way through these COVID days that go on and on and on. But as followers of Jesus who bear his name, we need to have the ministries of all. Whoever gives you a cup of water and quenches the thirst of your body. Whoever gives you a cup of understanding and quenches the thirst of your mind. Whoever gives you a cup of compassion and quenches the thirst of your heart. And whoever gives you a cup of faith quenches the thirst of your soul. The Christ has sent them to us. Receive them. Praise be to the Christ. Amen.
face to face once again in worship in this place. We reflect on this anniversary Sunday, on the generations of people who have come to this place to receive your grace, to receive strength in times of hardship, to rejoice in community in the good times. We hold them who have gone before us in our hearts, and in our minds, in our memories. And we who gather here this day look for inspiration from our gospel, from the sacraments, from preaching, from praying, from praising and singing together to help us make our way in a world that certainly looks different to us than it did even two short years ago. We give thanks that you still speak to us, sometimes in new ways and unexpected ways, ways that challenge our assumptions about who is right and who is wrong, who is in and who is out. God, help us to always be seekers of your truth. But help us to resist those moments when we think that we can possess your truth fully. Or that we could understand your ways entirely and so become hardened in our hearts towards others, towards those who are different from us. Sometimes we fail so badly when we attempt to understand what others bring to us, other ways of knowledge, other ways of wisdom, Help us to trust that the good things that bring life come from a common source, a source of love, a source of care, that come from you, who we as Christians experience so powerfully through Christ. We give thanks that we can receive your blessing in baptism, when we feel the touch of water upon us as your son felt as he arose out of the waters of the Jordan and your spirit was upon him and called us to listen to him to follow him to trust him and so we take that trust to you this day in prayer and trust that it will be carried forward in faith as we leave this place. God, there are people gathered here. There are people who will be watching this online. This is a moment for us to raise our own voices to you in prayer. Our prayers of thanksgiving. Our prayers of concern for ourselves and for others. Our prayers for those who are hurting in this world. A prayer of thanksgiving for the joys that we sometimes share. God, hear us now as we pray. We pray in Jesus' name, who taught these words to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 601. The invoice is united, the Church of Christ in every age.